Hello everyone, uh, João Pereira here and today I have a new tutorial on Houdini and I'm going to show you guys how to do this effect Alright, I was inspired by this effect and yeah, I tried to recreate it so let's see let's jump in Houdini and this is my final effect is thinner but it's mainly the same the same concept so here's how I went about it so I have my scene here let's just disable them now it's fine so I have a grid I started with the grid alright and I scattered some points on it as you can see and this is really basic but I'm just going to go through it anyway so I then added the um, like a sphere so the particles can collide and create the lightning bolt effect and I copy them onto the plane and I just added a quick stamp so they all add different sizes but it doesn't matter in this case I merge the two and this is just for the render alright so this is pretty straightforward you can use anything you want really it doesn't matter and then I needed to add the particles so I create the grid I made the grid like perpendicular to this, it doesn't matter, it, we're just gonna shoot particles from here, you can use any object and then I connected it to a pop network on the pop network, let's step inside, I have a pop object, I didn't choose anything and I didn't change anything on the solver, I just changed it here I typed this expression, so it is always emitting until frame 25, then it stops, as you can see and 55 for the birth rate, you can increase this, decrease it, it's your choice and also I use inherited velocity, it doesn't have velocity so yeah, it just sticks to the surface and one most, uh, last thing I did was on the geometry source, of course first context geometry and scatter the points onto the geometry the first context is this one, second, third, fourth. So I'm using the first one. All right, and I'm outputting the pop network, the particles to this particle node. All right, uh, I connect it. The second input is for the collision, so we just choose our our spheres. I don't know how you call them. So, yep, connect it and the particles here. And if you have you want to add a custom force, you can do it as well. All right, then what I did was instead of modify source particles, I used particle system and the point reuse, I used don't reuse points. Uh, by default, I think this is this comes by default, yeah. As you can see, it's always shooting particles. I didn't want that, so I just used the uh, don't reuse points. You can put this on, but it's gonna be really slower, and this worked for me. Next thing I used, I add the force minus five. So the x-axis, as you can see, it's the the um, the red line and I want it to go in the ne negative direction, so minus 5 and there they go and I have a particle ID I don't know why, but I just said it uh, you can change the life expectancy, the variance, doesn't matter and one important thing you need to change is the heat behavior by default I think it's ion contact let me see 
I can't reset. Just changes to bounce. All right. And very important on the split. I need to change split on contact. And this is the minimum value, and this is the maximum value. You can change this to whatever you want. So it's gonna when it hits with the surface, it's gonna emit either one, two, or three particles. And uh, I changed the the velocity range as well, and the gain normal. I, ch I this is was one. I changed this to. 0.5 so it wasn't wouldn't be that fast next and as you can see they bounce on contact and spawn new particles that this is what we want so next thing I did was add a race up and I needed to project the these particles against my collision object because right now they are just going away and I use the race up and change the entity to points and the method to minimum distance by default is projected rate just changes to minimum distance so if you preview this you can see now I think I can template this yeah they are always on the minimum distance to the surface so they project on the surface and of course then I change I uh, check this parameter I don't know why it doesn't really matter check that this stuff. Uh, then I added the color so because we have the same amount of points as you can see if we uh, color them randomly by point the colors are going to are going to be random but the the same amount of colors so then I merged the two as you can see they are really close to each other because they they are just being projected and the same amount of colors so next thing thing I did I just colored them yeah and on the projected race uh, points I deleted them by bonding no I deleted them one in five in six so every six particles one is gonna be deleted you can change this to three and delete even more I just change uh, five four it doesn't really matter and then I just let me just preview this and then I deleted by disable this and bonding volume I enable this one and I created a box around where I wanted the the race to happen so only particles only particles occur, occur here as you can see it's like a limit on this SOP yeah, like a limit plane so I just deleted them and I merge the two and next thing I need to do is connect the particles with the same color so add SOP I come to not points but polygons and by group and the group uh, we need to change this to from all points to by attribute and the attribute is CD as you can see particles with the same color create a line yeah and the line just has two points of course so we need to resample those to have more geometry to work with you can see creates a lot of points you can change this so I don't need this for it I was just I was just messing around so next thing I did was create an attribute swap. Uh, one guy showed me a really cool tutorial on for, for creating this effect. Uh, I will just go through the through the VOP so you can see what I did. But the, it's the same thing the in the tutorial. So I created an attribute VOP, VOP sub, 
whatever. And here I just created a float vector so I can have the time. Yeah, of course it's a float. And I convert this to a vector. And the, this doesn't matter, the multiply constant. It's just for the time offset. And I connected the time to the offset of my noises. So you, instead of going here and typing um, dollar $t times 2 or something, I can just have the same value and then multiply it. So that's this part. And then all I have here are noises. So let me preview this. All right. I have my first noise here. And it's a really simple noise, um, low frequency noise. It's, I think it's the default and I need to make sure this is a 3D noise. Next, I have a smaller noise to add more detail and an even smaller noise. Yeah. And I add the tree, create a really cool effect. Next thing I need to do is um, I needed to multiply with the curve view. The curve view is basically if you come to the resample node, we need to enable this attribute. So close to the edges, it creates a, a value. So if I come here, you can see what I did. If we increase this value, it creates create this noise around the edges. But if I choose this to zero, it's completely flat. So that's cool. I did the same thing on the other side. So that's basically it. Uh, I binded the, the curve view attribute. I connected to a ramp, spline ramp, of course, because it's a float. And I multiplied that too. Then I just added the final product to the original position and output it. Uh, I think we can connect this to C. No, I need to make another. No, no, then I don't want to. So that's it. It's really simple. And next, I just add a poly wire. It's really, really small. So I have this one here. So you can see better. Yeah. Just adds um, thickness to my line because previously it was just a line to add a poly wire with really, really low scale. Next thing I needed to do was if I were to render this out, you would see these points here. So I don't know if this is the way to go about it, So, but worked for me. So I created a fuse and a dissolve node. All right, I think that's by default. Yeah, so this fault settings on both. Uh, and then I connect the first, the poly wire with the points and uh, dissolve, which is the points I don't want. So I connect it to the VOP, the point VOP, and all I did was subtract the second input position, which is the points to the first one and connect it to the final output. So from here, from the little points to here. All right, just the lines. And I, I added a flat color, white color, so and cached it out to disk. And this is the render uh, for the lights, so I just I will I will just render this one, which is a simple mantra surface, and I will render this. But I needed to create light around this these uh, little splines. So let me go to a cool frame. Yeah, this is that's why I created this visual visual one so I can see the um, the lines. I then created a geometry light right here and I pointed the geometry object to my render one which is the 
the, the file cache. And created a really cool color. And I made sure to normalize the light intensity and turn off self shadowing. And this gives us this result. So just wait. Yeah. One thing you could do is on the material, you can have you can add a glow material. So glow. It's just off the shelf, you just search it. Glow. And you can see this one. And you need to change the color there as well. So I will just copy on my glow. Glow color, paste, copy. Yep. All right. So the glow has, and it gives a smoother result with opacity, which is really cool. But you need to boost the the geometry light, so you can see it better. Not so much. Yeah, gives like a a more, more transparent result. That's basically all I did. So I think I'm not missing anything. Yeah, that's everything I did. I j I'm trying to mess with the for each node, but yeah. So thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next week.